progress bars. How many of them we see every day? You download something, you get the progress bar. You install a new program, there you go. Even now, while you're watching this video, there is a cursor here on YouTube player saying that which point of this video you're at. And that is another example of a progress bar. However, have you ever thought about it? The question is like, what is a progress bar? It's a graphical element that indicates the progression of a task. Sometimes it gives you, you know, some extra bit of information, such as the ETA, which, although it stands for estimated time of arrival, it provides you with a rough estimate how much time is left till the operation at hand will be completed. The story of progress bar dates back the birth of computers. In the 19th century, a Polish management research came up with something called hormonogram or harmonograph, which showed production schedules. So this idea didn't take off because it was a piece of research written in Polish and very few people knew about it. Later, somebody called Harry Gant came up with a similar concept called the Gantt chart, which everybody still today uses it. So yeah, a progress bar can be seen as a direct descendant of Gantt chart, which were invented around in the 1910s. Back in the days, they were used to maximize the production in a munition manufacturer company. Now, basically, we use in an operating system to see if something's complete like installing a program. Progress bars can take many forms. As I mentioned before, it can be, you know, a reticle that fills or a spinner, just to mention a few. Sometimes they work backward. What I mean by backward? Think of a battery indicator in your smartphone. And sometimes a progress bar might not even indicate anything. Like, have you ever seen those one bouncing left and right? Those are called indeterminate progress bar, and they appear when the length of the task at hand cannot be determined, at least at the beginning, for some reason. A very easy example would be when your web browser is starting a download, and the server can take you know, some seconds to reply to, to actually start the download, and maybe a front-end developer might stick an indeterminate progress bar which bounces back and forth until the actual download gets started and begin to transfer data into your computer. Most of the graphical interface libraries, no matter whether they are, they are actually graphic or textual, there is always some sort of widget to represent and have a progress bar in your program. But what if it's not exactly what you need? So recently, I ended up developing a texture-based application, which now, currently, has still some bugs, but I'm 90% done. So I need to polish it a little, a little bit. And I'm using this Python library called Textualized that allows you to develop very nice texture-based interfaces. So I need to put a progress bar in a very narrow space, like 10 to 15 characters, depending on the size of your terminal window. I could stick the progress bar that it's already in the library and the problem solved. And that is exactly what I did at the beginning. However, something was missing. This program I made basically transfers files back and forth from my personal backup storage and I want to show the actual download or upload speed in kilo or megabyte per second. If I have this piece of information, let's say next to the progress bar, which already have only 15 characters, the progress bar will be very, very narrow, pretty tiny. What I wanted to do is to have a progress bar where it fills on top of the text. So the text is on the progress bar which is something that you can easily do when you have a graphical interface, but when you have a text-based you know, program, things become very hard to do. And this is basically what I'm going to show today. So, so before we go to the code, I will show you exactly what I mean. Let's say that is nearly 50% done. So this is part is somehow colored. I'm not coloring all of it. You will see why in, in a bit. And this part is still, you know, to be filled because the task is nearly 50% done. And I want to have characters on top, like text. Let's suppose that I want to write my name that has exactly seven characters, which is V-A-L-E. 
and then after I want to have with a different color because when the progress bar advances by one character my R, the background of the R becomes green and the R becomes blue. Why? I don't know, you, I just give provided with these colors, but uh, jokes apart with the style of the color scheme, this is actually what I want to do because the space I have is very narrow. The only way I can fit information is on the progress bar. Very easy to do when you have many pixels in a graphical user interface, but in the terminal, you need to walk this around. It's not extremely hard to do, but I don't know why these people haven't thought about it. And probably I believe that there might be library providing that, but I, I wasn't reaching the point that the time needed for me to search what I need. It was taking longer than I said, just to myself. I have here a class that I called highlighted uh, progress bar. I don't know, it might not be a fancy name, but it's the, the name I came up with. I'm not going through the entire class. I will focus only on the most important bits. So here I have three constants just to have an example of, you know, colors. So the background means the background color of the unfilled progress bar. The bar is basically the color up to the point the progress bar has been filled. And the cursor here, you will see in a bit what it does. Let's skip for, for the moment. So here I have my constructor that takes the essential information bar of the progress bar, like the total number of steps, because somebody can say 100 steps, but it's not necessary. It can be whatever unit you want. And the size is the actual size in number of characters of the progress bar. And then you have the three colors that by default I'm setting with these three examples I have here. So let's go to the core of this class, which is my render method, which is here. So behind the scene, I'm using another Python library called reach, which allows you to have rich text, which has been done by the same developers of that textualize library. So basically they came up with reach to have very nice colored text in your terminal and then they came up with that library which if you fancy having a look I suggest you to play around because you will get very nice applications in, in your terminal. So when you render you basically display a label on top of a progress bar. Now for your label you can also add the placeholder which in this case my placeholder will be to percentage symbol, which means that internally this method will replace that with the actual percentage of the progress bar. So anytime two percentage symbols are found will be replaced with the, I don't know, 20, 30 percent or whatever it is. Here I define a text to be rendered and the text class comes from reach, which also allows me to have paddings and colors. So I don't need to do, let's say, manually with the control symbols of the terminal. And uh, basically here I do the center or right alignment if I needed, or if it's a left alignment, I just don't need to do an anything because that comes uh, for free. Here, this is very important. Basically I cut, I truncate the text because as I said, in my case, I have a very narrow space. And if the text overflow, I just basically cut it and put the ellipses, basically three dots which basically is not actually three characters with the three dots, it's a one character in, um, in Unicode that is represented by three dots when it's displayed on the screen. And here basically I have all the bit of code to calculate the percentage, and here I start to make the style. So here what I do exactly is to fill the progress bar up to the character N, because if I have, uh, uh, let's say 10 characters, and uh, the progression arrived to 20%, I need to fill two characters. So the first thing I do is boom, I'm to the nth character so far, so I'm, I need to show this. And the first thing is like, I fill those characters with the character of the bar style, which includes the background and the foreground color. Because if you remember, there's a different foreground color for the empty bits and for the filled bits. Then here, I display the, the cursor. So the cursor is something that I wanted to have, and I will show you in the example that so when I'm calculating the percentage, I calculate also the number of characters I'm, I need to fill. And that is a, an integer number. So either I fill two or three characters. But if, uh, when I calculate here this um, N, and I, I can get the next uh, car percentage, I can get a float number. 
If I need to fill 2.5 characters, I fill the third characters of a different color, just to give the indication that it's going ahead, you know, it's not like hanging there, nothing is happening. <laughs> then here I just put two pipes at the beginning, just to have a sense of a square. And the last thing I do is to fill the whole progress bar with the background color. Now, some people can say, why don't you do the background first and then you do all the style? It's fine. So, because when you reapply the style to everything, the previous things you have done won't be overwritten. So stay there. So, uh, and uh, I found this quite convenient when I was writing the, this program because uh, I need first to check if the actual progress bar was filling. That was for me the most important bit. And now here we have an example, just very simple. I have a loop that advances the progress bar by 10 units every time. Uh, I just put a slip of one second, so it, it won't be pretty fast. This gives us the time to appreciate it a little bit more. And I'm just putting 50 characters. And you will see computer file, two square brackets, and inside the square brackets, the percentage. Now let me run this and I hope it works. Huh? Yeah, it's working, it's progressing. You see when the progress bar goes on top of computer file, the text becomes black which is basically what I wanted, right? And here, it's over, nothing fancy. Well, not for the way you see here, but in the program I had, it was exactly what I needed, I said, nice. Now, if I have four you know, uploads or downloads, I can see each of them, the speed of each of them, and it was like spot on. Now, let's see if I can recreate an example where you can see this uh, cursor filling in, so let's reduce the advance by two. Let's run it. One of the reasons I asked about making this video originally was I have a camera, a Sony camera, and when you format or initialize a SD card, it is hilarious and I will put it on the screen as to what happens, but the counting is in seconds and I think this is the problem. Why is it saying I'm doing it in seconds? It is just hilarious. All depends, exactly, all depends on how the ETA is um, is calculated. So sometimes the way this is done by some interfaces, for what I've seen by you know digging a little bit in their code, the ETA is calculated by what they call a moving average or exponential moving average. It has a weird name which basically gets the, the time for the last task uh, plus the previous time it has computed divided by two. And because of the previous time, it's always a divided by two already. So if you keep expanding, it becomes by four, by, by 16. So basically it weighs more the last task, but you don't know whether your Sony camera accounts for that or some, you know, if this, card, this task is done, we think that it, it, it has two seconds left, whatever. Yeah because they have their hardware and they know how more or less it reacts. Right? I think this is why these spinners came into being, because, uh, pe you know, let's not set expectations for the person who's the user, you yeah. know, let's just make a spinner, we don't <laughs> know how long this will take. <laughs> because the x86 machine code has two instructions that allow us to do that. One is called the Erdurand, and the other one is called Erdurand. Dystopian abandoned futuristic cities with overgrown plants, right? And then I just put them in a for loop and just produce 200 of them so I can pick the nice ones. 